Welcome everybody to a look at a new Arrow video release and they've given a 4K version of the one of my all time favourite horror films and it is 1990's The Exorcist 3. So this is directed by William Peter Blatty who only other directorial effort is also excellent The Ninth Configuration but he's also most well known for writing the novel that the original Exorcist film was based on which he wrote in 1971 and that film also came out in 1973. So yeah, this is a supernatural horror film clocking in at 110 minutes long. Had a budget of $11 million, which is actually smaller than the budget from the first film from 17 years ago. But it had a box office return of only $44 million, which is obviously a lot less than the original film made, but still a reasonable turnover uh, nonetheless. And it stars George C. Scott who is in the uh, role that Lee J. Cobb played um, in the original film. And he uh, was in the likes of Anatomy of a Murder and The Changeling, which is another excellent horror film, the latter of those. Um, so yeah, it also stars Brad Dorif, who was in the Child's Play series, which obviously then turned into the Chucky series, as well as Mississippi Burning. It also stars Nicole Williamson, who was in the likes of Robin and Marion, Venom, not that one, the one from 1981, The 7% the Solution and The Reckoning. And also stars Scott Wilson, Jason Miller, who was also in the original Exorcist, and Ed Flanders, all of which also starred in the Ninth Configuration alongside, who obviously was directed by William Peter Blatty. So on the 15th anniversary of the exorcism that claimed Father Damien Carris's life, Police Lieutenant Kinderman's world is once again shattered when a boy is found decapitated and savagely crucified. So I've never been subtle about my love for this film. We have actually looked at this in the past when I was doing, I think, a uh, horror f 31 Days of Horror where I was reviewing a horror film a day. Um, but so it comes as no real surprise that there isn't a single doubt in my mind that this is a better film of the three Exorcist films, while easily being one of my all time favourite horror films. Uh, this is due to this effort being more layered, uh, having better pacing, providing a more subtle way of showing violence and its impacts on others, improved themes, way more interesting cinematography, it is scarier, more chilling and tense while also having intentionally funny moments, especially the conversations between George C. Scott's character and um, Ed Flanders' character. Um, George C. Scott's, um, you know story about this carp that's in his bathtub that he can't stand the sight of is just hilarious and then they're also just talking in a uh, restaurant as well it's just all really really well done it is also decently deeply atmospheric and grossing from beginning to end it doesn't attempt to recapture what did work in the first film and even though i know the ending it wasn't originally planned as William Peter Blatty had a drastically different ending to this, the one that is in the theatrical release, it still works with the rest of the plot, aided by the fact that there were a couple of scenes planted in between other scenes that were originally there. So, uh, yeah, but what stuck out on this view with this new 4K release uh, is the sound design and how integral that is to providing a sense of dread and menace from this unseen force that has very real world consequences. So, uh, yeah. Excellent film, very, very an excellent film. Five out of five. Very rare that I give a film that rating. I think out of the four, four and a half thousand odd films that I've seen so far, that I've only rated less than 200 at five stars or more. So, very small percentage. And this obviously joins that very unique club. We, uh, with this Arrow video exclusive release, we get the original slipcover um, artwork, which I always liked as well. Um, especially with the Do You Dare Walk These Steps again, which doesn't actually really come into the film all that much. I think it's more of a marketing ploy than anything, but still a, a fairly solid tagline. And with the physical release itself, we get the, uh, I'm pretty sure everything else here is the same as the uh, standard Blu-ray release, outside of obviously the 4K disc at the front, and then the Blu-ray at the back. So we do get a booklet. Again, I'm pretty sure this is the same book that, that we had in the last release. Not sure if it says on the back. Um, no, uh, do I have it somewhere close by? Yes, I do. But we can check. Advantages of having uh, stuff alongside. So, uh, yeah. Now this 
version did come with a extra Blu-ray to have the theatrical cut and the uh, the Legion cut, which is what um, William Painter Blatty's original vision was supposed to be, but it's based on very old and worn out footage, quite frankly. So, uh, yeah. Just check in. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it's the same booklet. This is something that annoys me about Arrow Video when they do their 4K releases. They are very lazy when it comes to doing anything else outside of doing the 4K release itself. Because as you can see, the booklets are exactly the same. Which, you know, is annoying. When you're spending a least amount of money on another release, you'd expect something extra to be there. And there just isn't. All of the extras that were on the uh, discs as well are also on this. And you only get the Legion cut in Blu-ray form as well, just like you did with the original release. So, uh, yeah, it's only the theatrical cut that is in 4K, by the way. Um, and all of the extras that are on the disc are the same as well. But I'll go through them again just to, to talk about them. So uh, the 4K uh, has been, uh, is a, the theatrical cut has been restored in 4K. Uh, presented on 4K Ultra HD 2160p Blu-ray in Dolby Vision HDR10 compatible. Does look great. I'm um, not sure whether or not it's an essential release to get if you've never seen the film before or you only somewhat enjoyed the film before. But yeah, I uh, really do like the look of it and uh, I love the film so much that I just want the ultimate version of it and this 4K version is just that. And then on the disc itself, we've got audio commentary by critics Alexandra Heller Nicholas and Josh Nelson. Audio interview with writer director William Peter Blatty. Deaf Be Not Proud, the making of The Exorcist 3 as an in an in depth 2016 documentary divided into five chapters. Chapter one, A Wonderful at the Time, an interview with producer Carter DeHaven and members of the supporting cast and production crew. Chapter two, Signs of the Gemini, an interview with actor Brad Dorif. Chapter 3, The Devil in the Details, an interview with production designer Leslie Dilley and more. Chapter 4, Music for a Padded Cell, an interview with composer Barry DeVorzen. Chapter 5, All This Bleeding, interviews about the additional shoot and special effects. Because like I said, there were some reshoots that ha uh, happened due to the studio's insistence that this be linked to the Exorcist films. Because originally it was supposed to just be called Legion, which is just a continuation of the... Uh, Character Kinderman from the first film, continuing on with this whole like demonic presence that he's having to deal with. Whereas the studio were like, that's not really going to sell. What we want is an Exorcist film with your name attached. And yeah, even though obviously it didn't do great at the box office, it certainly did better than it might well have done as it had been just called Legion. Um, so uh, yeah, then we get the Exorcist 3 vintage interviews, archival interviews with casting crew members, including William Peter Blatty. Producer James Robinson, actors George C. Scott. George C. Scott unfortunately passed away only nine years after this film's release. Great shame. Would have been really interesting to see his uh, views on this film much later into his life. Um, as well as Jason Miller, Grandel, Grandel Bush and Ed Flanders. Falling Down a Long Flight of Stairs, an interview with special effects artist Randy Moore. The Exorcist 3 Vintage Futurette, making of documentary with on-set footage and interviews. Deleted scenes, alternate takes and bloopers along with image galleries, trailers, TV spots, and radio spots. So, uh, yeah, and then the Legion Cup is presented in 1080p high-definition Blu-ray, uh, assembled from the best available film and video elements, which is, yeah, not the best at all, really, in, in terms of the rest of the film, but obviously they only have the dailies to work off of for the Legion Cup, which is why it's like that. But you do have Legion audio commentary with Steam film critics Mark Kermode and... Uh, Kim Newman, deleted prologue and alternate opening to Legion with optional audio commentary from Mark Kermode and uh, Kim Newman. So, uh, yeah, it is a shame that there isn't more to this, you know, a poster, art cards, something, uh, you know, a proper hard box, something like that to uh, celebrate this 4K release, which is a, just a shame that that's the only aspect you're getting with this. The book is the same. Yes, you can get this new uh, slip cover with the original artwork. But you also did get a uh, slip cover with the original Blu-ray release with the new artwork on it. And then that had the original artwork on the actual case itself. So, 
yeah, it just feels like a little bit of swapping around and just the 4K and then that's it, which is a shame. It would have been nice to have some more extras or physically or on the disc, but that is just not the case. The 4K itself looks great and the film itself is genuinely excellent. This release, though, outside of the 4K aspect, though, is just a little bit on the lazy side of things. But it's not the first time our video have done that. And it undoubtedly won't be the last. But nonetheless, if you have seen this film before, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. But thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.